I love it. You know, we... Um, hey, everybody. Hey. We talk a lot about, talk a lot about drinking here. It's not, not everybody drinks in this company. By the majority of the people actually don't, I yeah, think. Actually, mm -hmm. but Which, uh, makes it more difficult for us to what? drink for them, I it's guess. It's funner huh? for us. Funner? Yes. I like that. More fun. It's more, more fun. More fun. It's more yeah. fun. I like it funner. So. Most smartest. It's the most funnerest. <laughs> most funnerest. Smart. But, yes, yeah, uh, we've got a sysadmin position. Please don't think you have to drink. You don't. Have <laughs> oh, to hit the, that is not a requirement. <laughs> you don't have to hit the sauce to work here. Um, <laughs> really, no. It, it's just if you work with us, you might. Perk. But really, no. Seriously. It's, no, no, no. Don't feel. Don't feel it's obligated. It's the only way we we can we can handle Deal with each, each other. other. <laughs> yeah. So. <laughs> oh, I got to work with Shane today. So. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, should we turn and burn, baby? Let's do it. All right, so welcome, uh, PDQ inventory twelve. Yep, awesome. and uh, it was immediately followed with a point release. <laughs> <laughs> Bugs. Anyway, uh, yeah, so we're at uh, twelve release two. Hopefully, you've uh, you've grabbed that. There are some new features, and of course, uh, to get to them, um, you can click on that. Welcome to PDQ inventory node right there, and you'll see the what's new in this version. You can always hit F1 to open up uh, your, your, your help document under the update notes right there. You can see, focus on the, <laughs> there was the bug that was fixed, but Oopsie. focus here. We're going to talk about, we'll talk about deep freeze status. Mm -hmm. um, Lex, you're going to show us the custom fields import wizard. Oh, this is awesome. Yeah, yeah you know, we've had custom fields for a while. It used to be called custom items way, way back in the day. And it was basically uh, the, how to store information that you can't collect from your inventory. Yeah. Um, and it used to be you had to do onesie twosies at a time. Just, but yeah, you had to do it one at a time, and we've had enough requests to do bulk, bulk imports. So I'll so, show you how that's done today. Yeah, perfect. We will talk a little bit about deep freeze and uh, some of the other things. Again, read these guys. Uh, you, you all know my acronym there, so. Yeah, you all, you all know that. Please read them. Um, you want, want to just, do you Let's wanna, jump in. Let's do it. All right, so custom custom fields. Again, let's I'll say let you, I want to collect uh, more data about my computers and what we're pulling. So I built a file, a text file, a CSV file. Basically, the t first line, if you want to make it really easy on yourself, put headers. Okay, and thing to note, you need to have a computer name in there because that's how we link information together and they need to match so what what's cool about this is we the bulk of the feedback we've gotten from people is hey I've got data in an Excel spreadsheet mm -hmm. I just want to get it into the database yep. well it's Excel save it as a CSV boom becomes easy <clears throat> so now the other you know so we got the file here so let's just jump into taking a look at how you import it so if you go under preference under custom fields by the way he just hit control comma <laughs> Thank you for narrating. He, well, shortcuts. He's doing the shortcut. <laughs> File preferences. File for those preferences. Of you who don't yes. Read Lex's mind and aren't terrified by what you find. That's a good point. All right, well, we're not going. To. <laughs> okay, I'm going to hit the import wizard button, and of course we're going to go pick the file. Now, I built this file. It says uh, possibly bad with some fancy characters in yeah, it. Yeah, and, and what? Because I want to show you what you're going to see in the event. Yeah. So there's some info. possibly bad data. Yeah. Right, okay. So we're going to open this up. Okay, and it's got one, two, three, four, five, six fields, five fields. Okay, so like these, these, are th these are things that we can't grab from an inventory scan, minus you know your computer name. You've got mm -hmm. your maybe your warranty date that that just warranty date. you can enter that information as it comes in. New computer comes into your environment, you usually enter that. But how do you handle the existing fleet? Now, right. Chris also apparently believes there are spiritual animals. No, a spirit animal. <laughs> hey, um. Someone, Chris built this. It's a great thing. Thank you, some, Chris. Someone but, teach him how to read here. Uh, <laughs> it's so, cue cards. So since these do not already exist, what is it? Oh, teleprompter. Quit reading the... T oh. I'm going to hit and just have it do it as a new column. Yep. Yeah. So in go. other words, it saw that the uh, computer name we already matched... The computer name already matched an existing field, mm -hmm. right? But, hey, we don't have an expiration date field. Let's do a new custom field. What if you are, if you already had the warranty date in there? It would have also matched that. It would have matched it up. If you had that warranty date in in your uh, custom fields. All okay. right. So right now, all the date date or the information that's being imported isn't being imported as text. I wanted to just show you this, okay? When we hit next, you're going to come up with it's going to show you a, a portion of what you're going to import, mm -hmm. and you look up top there. We've got a conflict, okay? 
computer's not found in inventory. So one of the computer names was Mr. Fake Computer that's not in inventory, so you're going to be given... So if there's a computer that doesn't exist, you're still going to be able to proceed. Import this, but it's just it'll not, it's ignore gonna, that, that line of data. It's going to ignore that line, okay. But, you know, if you look down at my data, right, I've got, you know... Yeah, you've got right some here specifically, data. just stuff that doesn't belong in date fields. So yeah. Let's say, you you know, you want to put your stuff in the appropriate field. So we're going to make these date time fields. So change the type, okay. Okay. And then spirit animal and cheesy slogan are obviously text. Okay. So now we go to the import, and you will see that there are also, there's now errors in our file. Yeah. So right Shane here. Shane knows how to do that, finally. Can you make it disappear? There you go. Okay. Yeah, so, um, <clears throat> so because you changed the, the, mm -hmm. the, the, the type. The type. The field types, this is now, this import's got a problem. Yep. And it's not going to import it because it actually has problems. So you need to go fix it. It gives you an idea of what we need to go so fix. So you won't be able to proceed mm -hmm. right here unless you want to skip those, unless you want to go back and skip those fields. Exactly. Now, if just so you know, behind me on there, the next button is grayed out so you can't proceed until yep. you fix with this. May I try something? By all means, man. But you might have data in, your, in this CSV file that you actually don't want a custom field for, and in that case, you could just say skip, right? Mm -hmm. And if you skip that, maybe you don't want the expiration date for whatever reason, and uh, that just, just because it's in there doesn't mean you have to have that. True. I, I just want to call that out. But if you do need it, and you have those date time or that, that, that data type problem, you're going to have to go back to your source. Is that and fix it. That's exactly it. So, you know, it... it uh, not wasting our time, guys. I'm just going to go grab a file that I already fixed and uh, I'll just import that one. I'm sorry? Yes, you can change the values. Yeah. Emily wanted to show that. Hey, Emily, why don't you come on in and show? Yeah. <laughs> talk maybe, about, the new, maybe talk she about will. the new position. Meet your new boss, everybody. <laughs> so there's no conflicts. Now I can just finish this up and then if we pull up Lisa Berger. You guys will see the files have been imported, or the data has been imported, and I need to learn how to spell. Lois Lane. Lois Lane. We've never had a Lois Lane computer, have we? We haven't. No, Maybe that's we're not going to either. We're getting away from these. We're getting away from that convention. There well, you we're go. We're getting away from the lack of convention. <laughs> yep, there you go. Um, yep, this is how you can see your custom fields on, at a computer level. We also have questions. Come on in, Emily. Serious? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, somebody says, Emily says do this. I'm like, bring her in bring here. Her in. Okay, so what I wanted to point out on, is where are you on the custom field? Are we, are we going to import some more? Yeah, the import oh. wizard. Mm -hmm. So if you come in here. She wants to show you how to change it. You can change it on the fly. Got the, the bad Possibly one? Possibly bad one, okay. yeah, if you want to change that data. So what you can do here is actually, well, now we need a new field, though. Okay. Say you didn't want this to actually name warranty date. Okay. You could come in here and name this whatever you want, and also my exact right, choice. right. Exactly, what I was thinking. And then also, if you skip something, you can click show skipped field here. Yeah. So the ASD, ASD, ASD shows right down here what it was and what it will be. Thank you Excellent. very much. Okay. <laughs> That's why she's the boss. <laughs> you can tell we don't do dry runs here, and she's like, wait, show this cool part. <laughs> Thanks, Emily. So there it is. I would like to say Emily is one of the biggest grammar nuts. I'm going to just save that ASDF, ASDF. ASDF <laughs> and make her yeah. see that forever because <laughs> it's gonna be we'll, we'll start she seeing her to... twitching and twitching and twitching. So anybody have any questions in regards to... The import. Yeah, if you if you do, just so you know, um, the old way. Obviously, you would get a new computer. You would um, open it up, go to your custom fields, and you'd answer those questions. Or if you wanted to um, go to preferences and just add a new one mm -hmm. in the custom fields, you'd say, well, let's do maybe a new field is going to be, and we'll do like um, true false. Maybe this is a day shift computer or something like that. Yeah. It's going to be yes or no. You know, this is how you used to do it. You still can do it this way, yeah. but this is how you would enter um, in the preferences what Addition you can. Field, yeah. Then that then that field is available on all computers on custom fields. There's day shift. Is it day shift? Yes, it is. Uh, you can check that, etc. 
if you, any custom field that you enter goes into the computer table or more appropriately the computer view. So when you're building a, when you're going to build a report or a, a collection, we'll mm -hmm. do a report, go to new report, basic report, there's your computer name, let's go to a new, we're going to show computer notice, you're going to see all these uh, I can, I can have and all, you know, all these things that that uh, were were added. Any new custom field will show up in here. Mm -hmm. So you're able to report on it. So there's a day shift should be D. Oh, I wasn't looking for day shift. Like, yeah, there's day oh. shift right there, <laughs> right? So it's going to be in the, people ask, hey, I've got these. Where are they? I can't find the table. It's in computer because mm -hmm. every every field that you enter has a one to one relationship with the computer. Yep. All right. Perfect. Questions, guys. All right. Thanks, Lex. Dear Shane and Lex, any chance there is a way to automatically grab registry values, i.e., we label each machine with a code sticker. That goes into the registry. It'd be cool to create a collection with that info. Sincerely, Chris J. Well, uh, the answer to that is probably. Um, the, the, <laughs> we have a registry scanner, but we, that registry scanner does not scan... Uh, current user, mm -hmm. it can scan. It can scan H key users, mm -hmm. but it doesn't. It doesn't grab the uh, uh, H key current user hive. So depending on where you put it. Yeah, it depends on where you put it. Um, there's a lot of. We have a lot of videos out there on creating um, and scanning for registry values. You do that in your scan profiles. Say these are the registry paths and or values that I want. Scan those computers with that scan profile, and that information will will exist. The answer is yes, unless it's H key current user or something like that. Yeah. Avoid putting it there, you'll mm -hmm. be fine. In fact, that's actually very common. A lot of people do do that. They'll just, they have the scripts uh, to, to put custom data in the registry and then they will grab that information in a registry scanner. Yep. Good question. Is there another question? No. No. Okay. All right. Let's move on. <laughs> All right. Uh, we've added the uh, smart. Drive status. Yes, uh, smart. I think was it S M R T as Homer would spell it. That's the uh, self monitoring <laughs> analysis reporting tool. It's been a, a part of WMI for a while. Mm -hmm. um, if you go to, we'll just open up a computer. Go to disks. Right. Clear over to the right Straight, side. Right. Yeah, right over here. Yeah, actually, you might need to. Disk drive out. There he is. Smart There's status. a smart status. Remember, if you ever want to modify, re reorganize where some of these are, you can drag this over if you want. You can also always click up and the customize this grid, mm -hmm. and you can move these up or down, or you can even hide some. You know, uh, maybe I don't want the description, I don't want the manufacturer, so I'll just move those, etc. That's how you can do it. But we do grab the smart status. Um, all of ours right now are either okay or, or blank. Offline, so we haven't pulled them, the information. Yeah. So, Chris, But the listing of things that they could be. Chris wanted to share this. Um, here's this. Uh, it's a, a class definition for WMI. The Win32 disk drive class. You can, If you look at this web page, you'll be able to see um, all of the different... Uh, let, let me translate that. Statuses. Nerd, nerd, Chrissy, nerd, nerd. <laughs> But if you guys also pull this up right here, I'm these sorry. are basically what you're going to see. Mm -hmm. Except we got to pull that towards the center a little bit. That's, sorry about that, you guys. Yeah, uh, it's <clears throat> so there's the URL. But these are these are the uh, the status the statuses. Um, that are possible. Chris is Chris actually Chris. He might want to pipe uh, pipe up there that he he's not as he's never really been as uh, um, flattered by the. The c calling it smart because it, to him it's not as smart if it's not reporting the right status. Sometimes yeah. it doesn't. Yeah. Um, all we can do is report what WMI reports. Yep. So it's more of a Homer Simpson smart. Yeah. That, that's yeah. what he just did. S M R T. If you want to uh, grab a report on this, um, or build a collection, or build a collection, then it would be in the disk. It I build a collection. Where's popped up? I'll let you. Did you build one already? It, I even spelled it S M R T. But anyway, so basically in your disk drive, your smart status, this one I said does not contain OK to see what else we had out there. OK. So so if we look at these are the machines that don't have OK, it's those, those, offline, those two so machines that are offline. Yep. Haven't right. been for a long time, so. 
But that was the request. We've had people saying, hey, we, we like to track that smart status. The thing you can use that for, uh, again, if you uh, weekly run a report on that, you want to go see if any of your drives have gone from an okay to a not okay status, you can have that report run for you. Mm -hmm. Kind of helpful. Um, another, another feature that we've added was um, just some, some very slight, not necessarily integration with Deep Freeze, but just reporting uh, uh, Deep Freeze status for those of you who use Deep Freeze. And um, I'll, well, we'll show you that. In the computer collection, in the collection window, remember you can do this also through preferences. Here's your collection page. Uh, these are the standard. this just the standards, but you can add columns. And these are the columns that are available. All right. And uh, if you go down, there's three deep freeze. There's deep freeze product code. Product version, version and status. status. Generally, I, I, I think people are mostly just going to want status if you use Deep Freeze. So there's our Deep Freeze status. Uh, let's click our little filter here and just say show me all non-blanks. These are these are the computers that have Deep Freeze. And remember how to if you want to move some of these over just to show you that. These are the computers that have Deep Freeze and their current status. Why is this important? Because if I'm going to deploy software to Wigam, Wigam is currently in a frozen state. So the, I could deploy, I could deploy it and, uh, some software to Wigam. After that computer gets rebooted, that software is gone. Yep. That's the beauty of Deep Freeze. Mm -hmm. um, so you can put him into a, a thawed state and then deploy software and then change that. Uh, we so, covered that before with, with deploy. If you want to do that with deploy, um, you need to have at least Deep Freeze Enterprise. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be the code. That would be the code DFE in the product. If, if you if you want to show that the version or the addition of Deep Freeze, but there's a you look at your DFC command. Look at your DFC command. I'm just going to quickly open up. Uh, we've got an old Notepad 692. Just as an example of how to deploy to uh, a computer that has Deep Freeze. It's frozen. Uh, the first thing you do, and you do this uh, based on uh, architecture as well, mm -hmm. because the, the, it does. And this is one that actually does kind of matter. Um, if it's a 64-bit, remember your conditions are set here. 64-bit version of Windows. Um, of course, run this command, command. Mm -hmm. and it's uh, system root syswell 64 dfc. Mm -hmm. You have to pass your play, uh, put the password in there, and you specify that password, the the CLI password when you configure your deep freeze computers. Um, that's beyond the scope of this. Mm -hmm. But here there's a bunch of DFC, deep freeze console or deep freeze command, uh, parameters, thaw at the next boot. Um, so here we're just saying, okay, let's go ahead and mark whatever computer to thaw at next boot. We then reboot the computer. Get that out there now. Thank you. Uh, after it reboots, it installs notepad, da 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 da, comes down. And um, freeze, freeze the next that. boot, and then the last step is to reboot. And if you want, you can do this in auto deployment. You can have um, auto deployment pre and post steps to do mm -hmm. this to try to bundle all of these together. Or so, if you're doing a lot of software, you just thought yeah. saw all your software freeze it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I think it was Stephen Baldinger, and thank you for all your participation, Stephen, and everybody. Stephen said it, it is kind of a pain when you want to update a bunch of. Of applications to keep on uh, thawing, installing, boot, reboot, you know, boot, freezing. Reboot, da, da, yeah. da, da. So no, uh, add 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 some extra steps. Do do some uh, nested packages or something. Get all those applications that you want. You know, let's say, say this is not just Notepad uh, plus plus, but a bunch of applications. You've got your thaw. Do a bunch of nests. Maybe I want after. I install Notepad. I'm going to do a new step, and I'm going to do a nested package. What am I going to? Well, I'll throw in Seven Zip. Seven Zip, right? Flash, Chrome, whatever you're up. Just keep on going, and then dude, that's how you can get all those computers in there using DFC. Once again, kind of out of the scope of this particular one. Uh, we've shown that before. If you have any questions, we can dig the, into that. But the good thing now is you can use a collection library to deploy against also. And keep in mind the DFC is a, a, a deep freeze enterprise only, but um, and that's what we have here. But this status should work for any deep freeze on Windows. Even mm -hmm. if you don't have enterprise, we should at least be able to show that status. See where it's at. Yeah. Um, this is only as good as the last scan. 
Uh, so maybe Wiggum is actually thawed, it just hasn't been scanned since, since it was moved into thaw. So just keep that in mind. Yeah, thank you very much. JJ just said, hey, let's uh, open this up so we can show the status in the computer window. So I just opened up Wiggum and I'm going to scroll down. And there's Deep Freeze status right there. Right there. All right. Uh, notice that we know a lot of you don't have deep freeze. It's fine. It'll just be it'll just be blank. But we boy, so, we had a lot of we had a lot of people saying we've been using deep freeze for years, and we would love to be able to, you know, to to kind of know the status before we waste time deploying software, yeah. or just at a glance, oh wow, this computer is still in a thawed state. Uh, let me let me hurry and fix that before fix I... that. Yeah. Right. And if you have once again, if you do have DF, if you do have enterprise, you can run also a remote command to mm, change that. That's true. Hey, hi, Bethany. Uh, yes, we have a question from yeah, the lovely and talented Bethany A. Dear Shane and Lex, do you know if information can be imported directly from another database like Spiceworks Inventory? Um, it, 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 we don't have a native way of doing that. There's, a, there's certainly, we, we just have a SQLite database, so mm -hmm. there are different utilities that uh, probably facilitating that. What we would recommend if you have data from another database is to uh, export that data, um, mostly talking about the custom fields, into a CSV file. It's the easiest way to do it. I mean, you saw it there. It was pretty simple. Mm -hmm. So, if you're if you want to grab data that we scan and another and another uh, inventory program scans, and you want to import that, we our scan will overwrite whatever you import. Yeah. Um, you know, like, like memory. Hey, I, I've got the amount of memory stored in here. I want to put that into the memory field here. That's just going to get overwritten. Yeah. So. Anything that we maintain is going to be overwritten by our program. So. Custom fields are yours to play with. Yeah. So, Bethany, uh, export and then use export to a CSV, you know, uh, and then do your, do your import wizard that way. And once again, for the import wizard, control comma is the shortcut. And Otherwise, file preferences. Yeah, custom fields, <laughs> and there's that new button, import wizard. So. Also, if you were to delete a field from here, let's uh, get rid of the spiritual animal. Spirit animal. No, nope, I think it's Lex, spiritual animal. Your spirit animal is illiteracy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I've been developing the illiteracy beam. Okay, so, <laughs> so we're going to remove spirit animal is currently being used by five computers. Delete anyway, yes. Data just disappeared up the database, yeah, so it's gone. It's it's uh, those five computers no longer have that. <laughs> just know if you delete it here, the data is coming out with it. So That's correct. <laughs> spiritual animal. Don't you have a spiritual animal? I've I've seen your dog. That thing is anything but spiritual. <laughs> Gosh. Oh man. Do we have any? Do we have any more questions? Yeah. Though? Let's see another one. <laughs> I love you. Yes, in the spirit of questions, uh, <laughs> does the PDQ Inventory have a way to track static inventory, such as portable drives or other equipment that aren't scannable? Sincerely, Red Roab 79. Well, um, there's a couple points to that question. Number one, like portable drives, if it's, um, if it's mounted, or, but probably like a USB 3 or something like that, it will show up, and you scan that computer at the time it's mounted, it will show up as a disk drive. Uh, but when you, you know, unmount it or uh, disconnect it, the next scan is going to be removed. Yeah. No, it does not keep that. We don't have historical data. So, uh, you know, that, that's where some of these cases, uh, I, I think the portable drives is probably not the best uh, example because we will, we will grab that when it's mounted and it's scanned. But data that, that can't be scanned, mm -hmm. um, that will survive. Now I just have that. I will survive. Aretha Franklin going on. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, the cake version of that song is much is, better. I agree. Yeah, it's I absolutely agree. It's cake just cake fantastic. Yeah. All right. Great question. Uh, yeah, a good question, except for the portable drives is something that we do grab. So that, which, that would show up in your disk drives. Do, do we any have other questions? Yeah, do we have any other questions? <clears throat> Dear Shane and Lex, how are the data fields matching with the correct computer? Does it match serial numbers per se for the asset tag I would be importing? Sincerely, Jason A. Guess I didn't point that out well. You got to match. We're matching computer names, so yeah. make sure they are spelled identical. Otherwise, they're not match. Yeah, we uh, are for for our for the PDQ inventory. Our primary key is the computer name. Mm -hmm. um, like we do track WID. 
uh, in Active Directory. And if we were if we required that your computer be part of Active Directory, that would actually be yeah, the, 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 the way. better link. Yeah. But um, in fact, uh, an old old product that we had, you did have a, a requirement for that. That was perfect to, to have that as the primary key. But we also track computers that aren't in AD. So that that AD Hence the GUID, name, the computer AD name. GUID, yeah. Remember, a primary key can, cannot be null. So uh, that's why it, it all comes down to the computer name. So uh, that CSV file that you import, that computer name that's has to match the computer on, so name yeah. there. That's, that's, that's how you do it. And then whatever serial number or any other data is attached to that name. All right. If you guys have any other questions about or ultimately going, hey, what, what, else, is, what else is new? We're not going to just go through each, each and every one of these. Um, but... Feel free to you know feel free to go through and and always figure out the best way to you know the best we, we make uh, improvements all the time I love it we keep on making improvements to the to the remote command it's that was one of the one of the first features and we're constantly making uh, making that better so please use remote command that's that's it, one of the it things it works that, really great it really does it really especially those of you who are starting to get into PowerShell, PowerShell. now you can do remote commands. From PowerShell with PowerShell commands. Every time someone says PowerShell, I used to picture Chris dancing like he was doing in the chair over there. <laughs> <laughs> so every time. That was Jordan doing a backflip just now. That was Jordan. Yeah, he did a backflip. Do you hear that crashing? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say it was a successful one. Backflip. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. Yeah, if you have any questions or want any uh, particular topics covered, by all means, uh, hit us up. Let us know. Throw down. We will promptly ignore you. Yes. All Catch right. y'all later. We'll talk to you later. Thanks for joining our webcast today. Big congratulations out to Chris J. and Bethany A., winners of soon-to-be vintage PDQ swag. Send us your info at webcast at adminarsenal.com, and we'll get that out to you as soon as we can. And don't forget, we are still looking for that PowerShell scripter position if you are interested. It's right there on our website, adminarsenal.com forward slash careers. Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you back here next week.